dear students in this e lecture we would be studying about cement cement as we all know it is a very important construction material mainly required for binding the building materials cement is a type of ceramic material which is formed or manufactured by heating its component at a very high temperature so let's start studying cement the objectives of this study would include introduction of cement that is what is cement what are its components then based on the components we will we would be talking about types of cement that is what are various types of cement finally we would be talking in detail about a particular kind of cement that is portland cement this kind of cement is very prevalent we would be talking about its raw materials and hence what is the method of its manufacturing the technology used for manufacturing of portland cement includes rotary clean method so we would be talking about this method finally we would be studying about properties of cement that that is what are various chemical reactions involved when the cement is mixed with water how does cement act as a binding material and lastly we would be talking about role of gypsum gypsum is used as a very important component for portland cement so what is the role of gypsum would be discussed in detail so let's start understanding what is cement as the definition states any substance having adhesive and cohesive properties and is capable of binding materials such as bricks building blocks stone etc is known as cement so cement is a kind of substance which should definitely possess adhesion and cohesion properties so that it could bind the building materials along with now to understand what is basically cement comprised of let's understand its components the basic components of cement include calcareous material and argillaceous material calcareous material mainly means lime lime that is calcium oxide so lime is known as calcareous material now how can we obtain lime that is what is the source of lime lime can be easily obtained from limestone which is naturally available the second uh, component for cement includes argillaceous material now argillaceous material includes alumina that is aluminum oxide and silica that is silicon oxide now these two components they are easily available from clay sand shale and other types of rocks so these materials they are combined as combined material they are known as argillaceous material now let's understand various types of cement on the basis of various components of cement the cement can be classified broadly into four types one of them is natural cement as the name suggests the components are naturally available the second type is pozzolana cement third type is slag cement and finally we would be studying about portland cement natural cement as the name suggest is made by calcining or heating strongly the natural limestone which should contain 20 to 40% of clay in it finally when the limestone and clay mixture is heated at very high temperature it undergoes a process which is known as calcination we would be studying about this process later on finally whatever is formed is then powdered or pulverized and hence it is known as natural cement the second type of cement that is pozzolana cement is one of the most ancient type of cement it is made by mixture of volcanic ash 
that is the ash which is obtained from volcanoes and burnt clay or shale this mixture is finely mixed with 2 to 4 parts of hydrated lime and this mixture is hence known as pozzolana cement now this kind of cement got its name as it was obtained first of all from the volcanic ash of Mount Vesuvius which is in Italy near a province known as Pozzoli. So hence its name is it got its name that is Pozzolana cement. Finally we have slag cement. Slag cement again is known as slag cement because it's mainly composed of blast furnace slag. In this particular furnace, the slag which is obtained, 80% of the slag when it is mixed with 10% of calcium sulphate and small amount of lime. This whole mixture is finely ground together. It is ground, mixed together and finally whatever we get is known as slag cement. Lastly, the very important that is Portland cement. The Portland cement is a mixture of limestone. It is a mixture of limestone that is from where we would be obtaining lime and the mixture of clay. So the mixture of lime and clay it is mixed together and finally it is processed for a very high temperature of 1500 degrees Celsius. During this process, calcination occurs. Finally, this mixture, it is mixed with small amount of gypsum, which is calcium sulfate dihydrate. The whole mixture is then powdered together and this mixture is known as Portland cement. Now friends, let's understand what is the meaning of calcination. As I said, we use limestone for the source of lime. So limestone, when it is heated up very strongly, it undergoes a process where carbon dioxide is liberated off and the lime which is left is used for the manufacture of cement. Hence, this process of heating up the components very strongly to release of the carbon dioxide is known as calcination. So let's quickly revise natural cement which is made up of limestone naturally available which contains clay. Both are heated together at very high temperature and we get natural cement. Pozzolana cement made up of volcanic ash and clay mixed with small amount of lime. This whole mixture it forms pozzolana cement. Slag cement it's obtained from furnace slag mixed with calcium sulfate and lime. They all are mixed together and we undergo uh, the process of grinding to get slag cement and finally we have Portland cement where we use a mixture of clay, limestone which are mixed together, calcined at very high temperature mixed with gypsum and the powder which is obtained is known as Portland cement. Students, in this particular course we would be paying attention towards Portland cement now the Portland cement, it was first manufactured in 1824 by a mason named Aspidin. He accidentally uh, mixed the raw materials and subjected them to very high temperature. And finally the material which was obtained, it had a color which resembled the stone of Isle of Portland which is a place in England. Hence the cement which was obtained, it got the name as Portland cement. Now what are the raw materials of Portland cement? As we had studied earlier, the raw materials required for Portland cement are number one, 
calcareous material that is lime. The amounts are mentioned here that is about 70% of lime. Argillaceous material which includes alumina and silica. Alumina and silica can be easily obtained from clay or sand whereas lime can be easily obtained from limestone. The third type of material it is ferriferous material which is known as iron oxide. It's used in very small amount. Finally we have gypsum that is calcium sulfate dihydrate. Now this is also used in small amount. Let's understand what are the functions of all these raw materials. Now the lime which is abbreviated commercially as C. It helps in providing the strength to the cement but excess should be omitted. You must understand this that if we use this lime in excess amount it decreases the strength. Instead of increasing it decreases the strength. So it must be used in the right proportion. Alumina which is abbreviated as A it helps in quick setting of cement. Very important component aluminum oxide it helps in quick setting of cement. Then we have silica which is again used for providing the strength to the cement. It is abbreviated as S. And then iron oxide it has multiple functions. It gives color, strength and hardness to the cement. Gypsum it also has a very important role which is it retards the setting time of cement. Now let's understand this fact that cement whenever it is used it is initially mixed with water and finally the plastic mass which is obtained it is used for binding the materials. So the cement when mixed with water it quickly sets up. Now the setting of cement if it is too fast the cement would flake up or it would develop cracks. So to omit the cracking of cement we need to retard or slow down its setting time. So to slow down its setting time we use this particular chemical which is known as gypsum. We will learn about this role later on in this chapter. So let's quickly revise calcareous material that is lime abbreviated as C. Argillaceous material include alumina and silica they are abbreviated as A and S respectively. Finally we have iron oxide that is abbreviated as F. We also add gypsum later on which is again a very important component. Also sulfur trioxide and certain alkalis such as sodium oxide and potassium oxide are also added in small amount in cement. The role of these component is that they provide soundness of cement. Now what is soundness? Whenever the cement mixed with water is allowed to set, it should not lose its volume. That is the volume of hydrated cement that is mixed with water. So the volume should not be reduced and hence this property of not reducing the volume of cement is known as soundness. So the soundness of cement is provided by these components that is sulfur trioxides and various alkalis. But mark this point that they both are also added in limited quantities. If we add them in excess they would rather reduce the soundness of cement. So the components should be added carefully and with a particular proportion. Having known about the components of Portland cement, now let's understand the manufacture of Portland cement. The process used for its manufacturing is known as rotary clean process. Now cleans are nothing but very uh, hot temperature or high temperature ovens. They are known as cleans. Now these cleans they are lined with special bricks which are known as refractory bricks which can sustain very high temperature and which do not 
get deshaped or do not get broken so the cleans they are basically very high temperature ovens so in this case we'll be using a special kind of cleans that clean that is rotary clean as the name suggest the clean itself would rotate would undergo the process of rotation and hence it got the name rotary clean process now what are various steps involved now steps for the manufacturing is the raw materials they are mixed together then they are sent into the rotary clean for burning this process burning process occurs in rotary clean finally the products they are ground or they are processed for the uh, they are subjected for the process of grinding finally the powdered product is ready for packing and it's known as portland cement now in the very first step that is mixing the mixing of raw materials that is the calcareous argillaceous material the ferriferous material and uh, the other materials they are mixed together by two processes one process is dry mixing while the other one is wet mixing let's understand the difference the dry mixing process involves the crushing and powdering of the raw materials separately without mixing them all the type of materials they are initially crushed down separately whereas in the wet mixing process the raw materials they are mixed with water and then mixed together to form a slurry this dry mixing process it is costly as well as it is a slow process whereas wet mixing process it is a cheaper process and takes place fast now the cement produced in dry mixing process it is of poor quality this is well understandable because the dry mix doesn't get mixed properly whereas this in the case of slurry due to the liquid slurry the raw materials they get mixed up very uh, properly and hence the quality of the cement which is produced is far far better now here in this case less fuel is required why less fuel is required because we don't need much of the fuel for drying the mixture in the clean whereas in the wet mixing process the slurry is first of all dried now since the drying process requires heating therefore more fuel is required here small cleans are required the size of clean may be small but in these in the wet mixing process since drying process also occur so therefore the cleans need to be of longer size so this is the basic difference between dry mixing and wet mixing anyhow once the raw materials they are mixed together they are then sent for burning in rotary clean so the burning process occurs in rotary clean now the fuel which is used for burning process because any process where we need heat it requires some amount of fuel so the fuel which is required here is basically either pulverized coal that is we used powdered coal we burn it and hence the heating process it is maintained or otherwise we use fuel oil for burning process that is for providing heat finally when the uh, burning process it gets completed in rotary clean then the products which are formed they are subjected to the process of grinding that is they are mixed and ground together finally whatever is obtained it is ready for packing so the main four steps involve mixing burning grinding and then packing now this is the pictorial representation of the rotary clean process for manufacture of portland cement looking upon this diagram we can easily identify that the central portion this portion it is the clean where the burning and heating process occurs as you all can see that the clean 
या जिसे हम भट्टी कहते हैं द क्लिन इट इज लाइंड अप फ्रॉम इन साइड विद स्पेशल काइंड ऑफ ब्रिक दीज ब्रिक्स आर नोन एज रिफ्रैक्ट्री ब्रिक्स दीज आर स्पेशल ब्रिक्स विच कैन सस्टेन वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर नाउ द क्लिन इट सेल्फ इट इज टिल्टेड इट इज नॉट हॉरिजोंटल इट इज स्लाइटली टिल्टेड एट एन एंगल ऑफ फाइव टू सिक्स डिग्रीज नाउ दिस क्लिन is subjected to rollers these rollers they continually rotate the clin at a rotation process of one rotation per minute now this rotation is done so that the raw materials they should slowly move into the various stages of heating so the rollers they help in rotation of the clin and hence the name rotary clin now what else is there in this uh, representation let's understand towards the left side we can see this is a silo from where raw materials or slurry can be put into the rotary clin so the raw material whether it is through dry process or wet process it then moves whether in the slurry form or in the dry form it moves into the rotary clin here we have four very uh, i mean three zones of heating now before i explain these zones let's understand that the heating process since the clin needs heating the heating process is done by continually burning pulverized coal by mixing it with air now you can see the blower or firing fans they blow off air and the pulverized coal is burnt over here to produce a very hot flame into the rear side of the clin so since this part is the most hot this is the hottest part of the clin so the here the temperature is highest whereas in the uh, this starting portion the temperature it is far less so hence now i explain various regions depending on the temperature of the clin the starting zone which has lower temperature it is known as drying zone the next zone which is at a moderate temperature as compared to this higher one that is at 1000 degrees it is known as calcining zone and the last zone which is at the highest temperature that is 1500 degrees celsius this is burning zone in the drying zone the process of drying occurs that is water it is evaporated in the calcining zone the process of calcination occurs and in the burning zone the chemical reactions of formation of cement they occur finally whatever is formed it falls down in the form of small pellets small pellets of cement known as clinkers they fall down these clinkers they are cooled down by subjecting them to cool air and finally the clinkers they are obtained these clinkers then they are ground that is they are powdered and finally mixed with gypsum and the cement is ready for supply now before we leave for the next process let's understand what is this part of the rotary clin now whatever is burning whatever processes are occurring in this clin the gases are generated it may be moisture that is water vapors it may be carbon dioxide or any other kind of gases they are then subjected to this exhaust fan which leads to a chimney so before the gases they move out in the form of flue gases whatever is the particulate waste it is settled down in the form of dust so this chimney helps to regulate pollution and finally it settles down the particulate dust and the flue gases they leave from the upper side of chimney so let's quickly revise this is the diagram or pictorial representation for a terry clin the clin has a dimension of 2 to 4 meters of diameter 
60 to 90 meters of length and since it is tilted it is not horizontal it's slightly tilted and hence it is undergoing the process of rotation with the help of rotation the raw materials they slowly travel from the this side lower temperature side towards the higher temperature side and in this whole process these the process of drying calcination and burning occurs and the clinkers they are finally collected into this region finally the flue gases they are given out through the process of this chimney dear students engineering chemistry involves the processes and various uh, uh, manufacturing processes and these processes can be well explained through flow sheet diagrams so whatever we have learned just now that is manufacturing of portland cement through rotary plane process can be understood through this flow sheet diagram let's understand this flow sheet diagram that is in the beginning we have raw materials what are the raw materials calcareous material that is lime and argillaceous material that is alumina and silica the two materials they are crushed separately or they are mixed with water and finally they are mixed together in right proportions they are ground together in various mills ya chakki jise hum kehte hain ball mills or tube mills and finally the water it is mixed to get a slurry in the wet process or otherwise simply the dry mix now this mix it is then sent into rotary clean the rotary clean is heated with the help of coal that is we burn the pulverized coal and the high temperature is maintained in the rotary clean a temperature of 1500 degrees celsius is maintained and hence all the raw materials they undergo chemical reactions to form clinkers they are pellet type of particles clinkers are formed these clinkers are finally cooled down in the process of cooling that is they are sent to coolers where cool air is passed on them and the clinkers they cool down finally the cool down clinkers are then ground in the ball and tube mills that is they undergo crushing process and they are converted into powder at this stage gypsum is added to the mixture gypsum is generally added in a proportion of 2 to 6 percent now the gypsum it is added to this powdered mixture and this mixture is known as portland cement now the cement it is then sent for weighing and packing and hence it is ready to supply now let's quickly understand what are various chemical reactions involved in various zones as we had studied just now that in the brick, uh, rotary clean there are three types of zones that is drying zone calcining zone within a range of 400 to 1000 and then burning zone within a range of 1350 to 1500 degrees celsius now let's understand in the drying zone what is expected it's water which actually gets evaporated that is whatever whatever is the amount of moisture in the dry mix or whatever is the amount of moisture in the slurry it gets evaporated and all the mixture that is all the components they are dried together finally as the mixture move towards or the raw materials as they move towards calcining zone they undergo calcination so as said earlier calcination involves heating to liberate carbon dioxide so as the raw material it contains limestone so when it is subjected to very high temperature the carbon dioxide it gets released due to its decomposition and what we get is lime that is calcium oxide finally the burning zone that is 
very high temperature in this zone actually the chemical reactions occur which undergo to form cement let's understand these chemical reactions now the lime it combines with silica to produce dicalcium silicate now this dicalcium silicate is also abbreviated as c2s its component in portland cement should be 25% then calcium oxide it combines with silica to also produce another component compound which is tricalcium silicate or c3s then calcium oxide ya lime it can combine with alumina to produce tricalcium aluminate that is c3a and finally calcium oxide alumina and ferriferous material that is calcium oxide aluminum oxide and iron oxide may combine together to produce tetracalcium aluminoferrite which is also known as c4af now let's understand that the these all four components they comprise cement they form cement their proportion should be 25% of dicalcium silicate 45% of tricalcium silicate 10% of tricalcium aluminate and 10% of tetracalcium aluminoferrite now these are the chemical reactions that occur in the rotary clean now students you might have now got a good knowledge of what is cement and what are its various components now let's understand about the properties of cement that is whenever the cement is mixed with water what really happens that it acts as a binding material now whenever cement is mixed with water it undergoes a process of setting and hardening that is whenever cement is mixed with water it forms a plastic material which can be molded accordingly and this plastic material it starts to get stiffened that is we can say that cement undergoes setting and hardening when only when it is mixed with water so what is the difference between setting and hardening now let's understand this now setting is also of two types that is initial setting and final setting whenever the cement is initially mixed with water a plastic mass is formed which can be molded and this formation of plastic mass is known as initial setting of cement so whenever cement forms a plastic type of material it is known as initial setting of cement immediately after the plastic mass it is formed it's get it starts getting stiffened so after a few hours of initial setting the plastic mass stiffens up or gets somewhat stiff this stiffening process when it could not be molded into any other shape it is known as final setting so you can understand that initially when water is mixed with cement it gets converted into plastic mass this is known as initial setting and when the plastic mass it gets stiffened it is known as final setting there is a test known as wicket needle test which can be used for checking the final setting of cement so in this test when the needle it is added into the cement it does not penetrate any more so initial setting and final setting let me tell you students both these process involves hydration of cement that is cement it when whenever it gets mixed with water it undergoes the process of hydration then after the cement has underwent the process of setting it gets into the process of crystallization that is after final setting the cement starts getting harding up 
and this hardening process it involves development of strength in the cement due to crystallization so what is hardening it is basically crystallization process whereas the sim setting was simply the hydration process hardening is the crystallization process where crystalline products are formed this process is a slow process whereas setting is quick process hardening process is slower process and it may occur for few days and it can prolong for one month also so this is known as setting and hardening of cement lastly let's understand what are the chemical reactions that are involved during setting and hardening of cement kindly pay attention that we had studied that in this process of rotary clean there are four main, main components of cement that is dicalcium silicate tricalcium silicate tricalcium aluminate and tetracalcium aluminoferrite so all these components they undergo hydration process and this comprise of setting and hardening of cement now let's understand the chemical reactions also as soon as the cement it is mixed with the water when we mix the cement the very initial reaction that takes place is these two reactions that is tricalcium aluminate it gets hydrated to form crystalline substance now this hydrated crystalline tricalcium aluminate is formed and a lot of heat is generated these reactions are all exothermic now this crystalline substance it is formed too early and therefore we say that tricalcium aluminate is responsible for early setting of cement next reaction which occurs is tetracalcium aluminoferrite it also undergoes hydration and the hydrated products are formed again the reaction is exothermic now mark this thing that these two components that is tricalcium aluminate and tetracalcium aluminoferrite they undergo hydration process very quickly and these two reactions they occur on the very first day of hydration now this kind of crystallization or crystalline product which is formed it is responsible mainly for initial setting of cement now next thing the tricalcium silicate the other component that is tricalcium silicate also undergoes hydration process but this process it occurs at a later period and it undergoes it takes place for about 7 days whereas these two reactions they occur very immediately on the very first day this component it undergoes hydration later on and the whole process takes place for a period of 7 days now this component that is tricalcium silicate is actually responsible for binding properties of cement these two reactions they help in early setting whereas this component it helps in binding properties because upon the hydration of tricalcium silicate tobimonite gel is produced so this tobimonite gel is mainly responsible for the binding properties finally the dicalcium silicate the fourth component dicalcium silicate it also undergoes hydration process and it also gets hydrated and this reaction occur takes place at a much slower rate and is again responsible for strengthening of cement so all these reactions they occur as soon as the cement it is mixed with water but please pay attention mark this reaction the tricalcium aluminate it undergoes hydration to produce a crystalline substance this particular reaction is mainly responsible for early setting of cement early setting of cement now if the cement gets setting at a very early stage it may develop cracks cracks generate ho sakte hain 
and if cracks they are develop they decrease the strength of the cement so here comes the role of gypsum we want all these reactions to occur but we want to retard or slow down this particular reaction because tricalcium aluminate it gets hydrated very soon so to retard or slow down this early setting we add gypsum and here comes the role of gypsum now what is the role of gypsum let's try to understand this now gypsum has a particular role of retarding the time of initial setting as i told you earlier the tricalcium aluminate is responsible for early setting of cement but if we add gypsum in the cement now this gypsum that is calcium sulfate dihydrate it reacts with tricalcium aluminate and hence both of them they react and get hydrated to produce this insoluble tricalcium sulfo aluminate now this compound it helps in retarding or slowing down the initial setting of cement so cement gets set up but it doesn't get set up at a very fast speed and hence the crack formation is omitted no cracks are formed therefore the gypsum which is added it helps in retarding or slowing down the time of initial setting dear students i hope this lecture would help you to understand the concept of cement i've tried to explain all the possible topics that need to needs to be covered for this particular topic of cement thank you